Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, and I would say it is high time we made a hip pouch. How cool is that? It's not a terribly difficult project. There are all kinds of ways we could go with creativity to make it our own, but the best part, totally usable project. All right, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there. I'm gonna take you straight to the website. Also, if you wanna know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over to our pattern table, get started. This pattern has a bunch of pieces and parts, but everything's gonna make sense and it's all gonna fall right into place. We've got a digital pick. We're gonna talk about that, but let's do this in three steps. Let's look at what we're doing, then we'll look at our pattern, then we'll go over to those for some specifics. So right here, this is a hip pouch. It's gonna sit exactly where a holster would. How about we give this the shape of a holster? Well, that cool idea fell right into place, right? So on this, we've got three pockets right here. We've got a secure pocket with a zipper, a semi-secure pocket with a line 24, and I like that shotgun shell. And then up here, we're gonna back two pieces of leather, flesh to flesh, mainly for stability, but also that's gonna give us a big pocket. Now, I call this a convenience pocket. I don't know if that's an industry term or not. It's not secured. It's simply easy in and easy out. Right here, we've got our belt loops. We can absolutely go with a belt for this and we'll look at a pattern, but I like the belt loops. And then down here on the back, again, two belt loops and we're gonna drop in a one inch leg strap, okay? So we've got a feel for what we're doing. Let's look at our pattern. So right here, this is our main body. We're gonna cut two, one up, one down, because if I've got a little bit different curve over here than here, if we cut one up, and then one up, those are gonna fit together perfectly. We'll never see an extra little piece of leather sticking out. So down here, I've marked this back only. That's for our rivet holes, for our belt loops. Right here, our second piece, I'm gonna cut one, and I can say up or down. On our sample, we're gonna go with the flesh side up, change it up a little bit, that looks good. So right here, we're gonna have a pocket or a, a cut for our zipper, and that's simply gonna sew right onto the main body. Next up, we've got our pouch and our flap. That's gonna sit right there. And up here, we've got two billets, and then we've got a belt loop and our leg strap, okay? So it's starting to fall into place, right? Let's jump over to our digital pick, or I should say our digital picks. We have several to look at. We're not gonna spend a bunch of time on each one. Feel free to pause the video, absolutely. So on our main body, cut two, one up, one down. Bottom left corner, we've got a 40 millimeter circle there. We're gonna talk about that. When we jump over to our overlay, this is our flesh side up. We're gonna cut one. There's our hole for our zipper, easy enough. And down left corner, 25 millimeter. Again, we'll talk about that. And over to our pocket and our flap, relatively easy here. We've got our flap three inches or about 7.62 centimeters, four and a quarter wide. Same on our bottom, but we're gonna go five inches long there. 12.7 centimeters, and in our bottom left, we've got 12 millimeter. And over to all the billets and measurements and dimensions, but in all honesty, we'll go over each one of these, but they're easy. So there's our two billets, top left, that's gonna connect our O-ring to the body. We've got two belt loops for the back of the main body. On the right, we've got two keepers. We're only gonna use the lower, because below that, there's our leg strap. Now, if we want to go with belts, we've got a good pattern there, and we'll also use the upper keeper there. Last, over to our belt loop. This is easy on, easy off, relatively simple pattern. Okay, so we've got a feel for this. Let's jump over to our main table. Let's cut some leather. Let's do this project one simple step at a time. In our first step, we're gonna mark and cut for each of our pieces. Now, our leather. This is our Telfair Pebble Grain Super Soft. I love this leather. First off, it's chrome, so it's a little bit supple. But secondly, four to five ounce, that's a good weight, good strength to that, but it's also got a little body to it. And last, I love the grain on this. Now, I was gonna go with black on this. Makes perfect sense. But after the boss saw the brown, I think we both agree, let's go with the chocolate. And let me tell you, something that's named chocolate, we cannot go wrong. All right, so let's start right here. I'm gonna take my main body, and again, we're gonna cut one up, and one down. Now, marking leather, 
always an issue. I'm going to use our smallest all. That's going to create a line I can see. Camera may not be able to pick that up, but let's work this over into a pretty piece of leather, and I'm going to mark this with my all. And I think we are marked, and I think the camera can see that. Good. Now, two points. Right here on the bottom, we're just going to cut square. We'll come back in with a round corner knife. But secondly, when we go to our leather, let's cut with a new blade or sharp blade every time. So let's start down here and cut these pieces out. Good, our two pieces are cut. Now, don't hesitate to cut out a larger piece of leather. Makes it a little easier to see and cut. But secondly, we're not gonna mark for our holes yet. That gets very confusing. So that'll be our next step. So what I'm going to do now, let's cut the balance of our pattern pieces. But on this one, we gotta remember, let's cut this flesh side up. Good, that's our leg strap. Now, to get a good measurement on our leg strap, if you've watched any of our belt videos, we use what's called a shorty, not an industry term, but basically the red line, that's my waist size. And then for a blank, I'm going to add the distance from there out and there out. In this case, it's five and a quarter inches. So I measured my leg just above my knee. I'm about 20 inches. So I'm gonna add five and a quarter to that. So my blank here is 25 and a quarter inches. So let's trim this to size. Good, there we go, that's gonna work. Now, one other point right here. We're gonna use our round knives on our corners, but on this, I've simply left that corner so I can cut it with my round knife. Yeah, there we go, hard to hold with that zipper cut, but you can absolutely cut this by hand. Okay, so let's reset here. We're gonna mark and punch our round holes. And again, one at a time, so let's start with our main body and our face first. All we have to do here is mark for four holes. We'll punch these once this is sewn together. We don't have to worry about those lining up. So let's drop in these four marks. Good, we've got those. Now, that's all we need there. So let's set that aside. Let's come over to this. There we go. Now on this, we only need the four marks for our rivet holes for our belt loops. Good, now let's go ahead and punch these. There we go. So on this, we're gonna use rivets here. Let's go with about the third tube up, simply because I want this to be a little more snug. The more snug the rivet is in the hole, the more durable it's gonna be. Okay, good, that's all we need on that piece. Over here, nothing required, except, like I said, we can cut these curves by hand, but I'm gonna leave them right where they are. We'll punch those out, or we'll cut those with a corner knife. On our flap, we simply need a hole right in the middle for our line 24, and the same over here. Now on this, I'm gonna bump the size up on my revolving punch, because we're going with a line 24 snap. So let's come up to about maybe three and a half, there we go, three and a half millimeter. Good, we've got those two holes in. And on our belt loop, we just have the three holes here. Now punching this, these are all gonna be line 24 holes. Good, last hole there. Now our two smallest pieces are actually three. We've got our belt loop and our keeper. So let's go all the way to the end on the keeper, both sides. Good, and on our belt loops, let's mark and punch these. We've got those, and again, rivet hole here. Okay, and over to our billets, let's mark these. And again, rivet holes here. Okay, last up, our leg strap. Now, the great thing about this pattern, we've got our, our blank length. So all I have to do is scoot to one end, mark that, and then scoot to the other, and it's gonna be a perfect fit every time.
Now, on this end, for our size holes, we're going to go with a roller buckle. So let's go up to about the second from the largest hole. Good. Now, on this end, let's jump back down. This is going to be a rivet hole, so let's back down to the third or even the second tube. Good. Let's step over to our punch table. Just like before, let's take this one piece at a time, keep us from making a mistake. So on our pattern, we're talking about our corners. Here's what we're doing. I'm going to use our round corner knives. We're coming in half of an inch. So let's start with the one and a half inch or the metric equivalent. Let's come in one and a half, one, and then half inch. That's going to make our corners proportional, very professional. Now, if you don't have the round corner knives, and I absolutely love these. Since the day we brought these in, I use them on almost every project. But if we don't have these, we can simply use a template. Okay, so on our main body, our two pieces here, we're going to go with our 40 millimeter. So let's take this and let's punch all four bottom corners. Very nice. Those are going to fit together very well. Our next piece, over here, we're going to jump down to the 25 millimeter, roughly one inch. Let's cut our bottom corners, then we'll increase the size up here. How nice and easy is that? Now up here, we could absolutely cut our corners, but let's jump back over to our 40 and trim off those points. Well, that looks good. Okay, next step over to our pouch and our flap. So right here on the bottom of our pocket, we're going to go with the half inch. Good, we've got that. Now over to our pouch flap. Now on this, I almost wanted to leave a natural edge across the bottom. That would look good. But down here where our, our hole is, let's jump up to a 25. Looking good thus far. Next up, let's go to our belt loops. These will be on the back of our main body. Now on this, let's go with a three quarter inch round end punch on both ends. We've got those. Over to our billets. I'm gonna use our round corner knife on these. And those look good. These will be our belt loops that are going to go around our belt. And all we need here is a round end punch, both ends. Those are done. Last up, let's go with our leg strap. So on this end, our size holes, we're going to go with a one inch English point. Up here, for our oblong, the rule of thumb is one inch strap, one inch oblong. And last, we don't have to go this route, but if we've got the tool, let's use it because it's a nice, nice touch. One inch round end. Very nice. Let's reset here, add some hardware. A little hardware and we're knocking this beautiful project together. So on our main body, let's start right here, one piece at a time. On our face, we don't need any hardware there. On our back, we're going to need our belt loops. Now we've got a dilemma here because we're going to go with a medium double cap. That's technically a 5 16 We've got the smaller, that's a quarter of an inch. But watch what happens when I put a medium through both pieces. Right there alone, we've got a problem. Notice how much post we've got above our leather. What's going to happen if you've set two rivets in your life? I guarantee one of these has offset because that's too much rivet. So right here is small. That'd actually be perfect. But notice the cap size difference. Better set 
more durability. So let's go with a medium double cap here. In fact, we're going to use the antique brass. It's going to be a perfect look on this brown. So let's drop that through. Okay, cap. And now our setter. What I want to do is hit that as clean and straight as I can. There we go. Good. We've got it. Okay, I'm going to do the other three the same way. And it looks like I've got a good set there. Okay, so let's set that aside. Now over to our belt loops. So on these, we're going to do these a little bit differently. We're going to go with the line 24 snap. So let's get all our pieces together. So right here with our base, I'm going to drop flesh side up onto our post. Okay, let's take our one and a half inch antique brass O-ring. I'm going to bring that in and then I'm going to put this other piece right there. Okay, good. So we're making our own loop. The point with this, we could certainly make a just a loop of the snap, but this is now secured to the pouch. We're not going to lose it. So let's take our base piece, line 24 setter. That looks good. Nice set. On this end, let's bring our cap in from the top grain side and let's set this the same way. And one more set. Good. I want that set just to where it's not going to spin. So there we go. We've got our belt loop. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And that looks set well. Good. Set those aside and now over to our pocket. So on our flap, we're going to go with a shotgun shell line 24. That's a cool snap. The problem is, if we don't have an anvil for that, let's take a piece of leather, drop that down, and now let's go through this. But again, we've got a lot of posts there. So let's do our best to try to keep that setter straight up and down. And there we are. I want that set just enough to where that doesn't spin. Now, we could use these on the belt loops, but these are a little thin, three quarters of an inch. But if you want to use these, just bump that up to one inch. So on our pocket, I'm just going to set the other side of our snap the same as we've done before. And just enough to where it doesn't turn. There we go. I don't want to go too hard there because if I draw this down, the flange here will draw in. It's not going to bite for us. Okay. Last step, let's jump over to our belt strap. So on our keeper, I'm going to go with a small double cap. Let's drop that down under our anvil. Good. Bring one side around. It's an easy way to make a keeper. There we go. Yeah, I always have trouble with the smallest pieces. So let's bring this around and drop in a cap. Good. We've got our keeper. Easy enough to make there. So over here, let's start right here. Now, Let's don't forget to add our keeper. I am so bad about doing that. Let's slide that on our one inch roller buckle. Good. Now let's go with our medium double caps. Now, when I set a buckle, I can always let the loop, the bend back hang over the edge. That way I can get a very straight up and down set. Very nice. We are ready to knock this together. Let's jump over to our main table. I am ready to see this come together. So let's start right here. Now on our zipper, we're going to go with a number five zipper, and this is six inches long. We're going to go with the brown tape and brass. But if we want to go black brass, black nickel, we can do that. So on this, again, I have to keep reminding myself, flesh side up. So let's flip this around and we're going to use our double sided tape. This is one of the best materials in my shop. Oddly strong. And we've got this in two widths. So on this, what I'm going to do is drop in my tape on both sides of my zipper cut. And that sits right there. Now the trick with taking off the backing, I'm not going to try to lift. I'm just going to scrape with my thumb. There we go. That'll release the backing. 
That looks good. Now on our zipper, we can go left or right, doesn't matter. But one point with a zipper, if we're going vertical, I want my pull down. Because if it's up, eventually that's going to work its way down. We've got an open pouch. But if the pull is down, it's going to stay down. So let's drop that in, flip this over. And let's do our best to center that. Good. Now, when we get down to this end, let's take our pull over. Good. So now we can get that flat and even. Good. Okay. Let's set that aside. We'll sew that shortly on our pocket. What we're going to do here is we're going to tape this and then sew this down just like that. We've got to remember, again, this is upside down. So on my pocket, I'm going to put my, my double-sided tape on three sides on my flap just across the top on the, on the top grain. We've got that down. Now, I'm not going to take the backing off just yet. We'll do that when we get to my machine because as we stack this up, everything's going to stick together. On our main body, we're just going to sew three sides. So I'm not going to worry about getting my tape all the way around. I'm just going to hit a couple of spots. That's all we need. Now, we can absolutely go around curves with our double-sided tape if we need to, but that's going to be enough because here we just need to hold this together while we sew it. I think we've got everything here, so let's step over to our 303, get a little needle time in. One big point, we can absolutely hand sew this if we want to, and it's going to look good, but let's go with our Weaver 303. If you want to jump up to sewing, great machine. Easy to operate, easy to maintain. So over here on our zipper, let's start right here. I'm going to go all the way around. I'll do my back stitch on one end or the other. But the big point with this, let's make sure we get on that tape because we've only got about a quarter of an inch. And that's in. Okay, we've got our thread trim, but let's don't forget, let's trim the end of the tape on the zipper. And we've got that. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now over to our pouch. We can measure this, absolutely. But I'm going to eyeball this. We're going to lay this in right here. So let's remove our tape. Okay, yeah, that's good tape. So on here, let's lay that in, half inch in. That looks good. Okay, our flap, let's butt that right at the top. Press that down. Now here, I'll start up here because we'll never see that back stitch. And reverse one and there we are okay well looking good thus far and there is our pocket nice now the one thing I forgot I didn't put any tape on this so I'm going to grab my tape drop that on there and then we'll jump over to putting that on our main body good we've got our tape on this now we're going to drop this on our main body and again here, I'm just going to eyeball this, but it's a pretty thin line, so it's relatively easy to line up. So let's get that in. Good. Press that down, and now I'm going to start on the bottom for my back stitch. That's the least seen part of the project, so...
and one in reverse. There we are, that looks good. And there we are, beautiful thus far. Okay, let's take our tape off. We're gonna glue this to our backing piece. And that is lining up nicely, good. So I'm gonna start my stitch here because we'll have a billet over this. We'll never see a back stitch. Then I'll finish up here, but we are not sewing across the throat. And we are done with our sewing. Very nice. We're gonna step over to our punch table, knock in four rivets, and we are done here. So let's set our last four rivets. Right up here, we've got our marks. Let's punch these. And our last hole, okay. So, four ply here. Let's take one of our O-rings. We're gonna go snap up our large double cap, or our 7 sixteenths. So let's go through our billet and through our body. Let's add our O-ring and drop that back down. Good, okay, two caps. Let's do the other side. Good, there we go. Now, earlier I talked about having too much post on our rivet. Right there, that's exactly what we want. An eighth of an inch or less above our top grain. That's gonna reduce the risk of this offsetting on us. Very nice. Okay, let's add our strap here for our leg. Well, overall, I am happy with this project. Now on the belt strap, we can slide that through from either side. If we want to secure that, we can always drop in a rivet or even a Sam Brown. So a critique on this overall looks pretty good. Right here, it's a bit of a rough cut along there. And over here, this one's going to make me nuts. It felt like my lower leather or my backing leather was getting a little too far in. I panicked, I jinked, shouldn't have. I was fine. But overall, that's a good looking project. Well, how cool is that? I am happy with the outcome here for so many reasons. First off, it looks good. Secondly, easy on, easy off, and it hangs exactly where my hand would rest. Now, big point too, we can do everything with one hand. We can open the zipper, open the pocket. Where I'm going with this, so we don't have to reach around every time we need something, that's a big plus. But overall, what a great project. Now, use this pattern or absolutely make it your own, but either way, have a great time with it, and I hope your hip pouch comes out beautifully. Good luck with your projects. Mm -hmm.